Hey guys, Chaps here, and welcome to part 2 of our Advanced Horde Strategies and Tips video. To catch our general guide or part 1 of this video, click the links on your screen or in the description. Let's hop right in and talk about a tip for getting as much energy off the map as possible. As you all hopefully know by now, the scout gets double energy when they pick it up while the round is still in progress. For this reason, it's important not to kill the final enemy until the scout has finished running around. Due to how important this is, it took us no time at all to start utilizing some tricks and tips to give them more time to run around. Traditionally, a scout will start their run when there are only about 5 enemies left on the field. Let them do their thing, running around and collecting energy as efficiently as possible. Now what's your job during this time? First and foremost, slow down the killing. Let the last few enemies live longer. That's kinda obvious, but here's the main tips. First, don't worry about them beating on fortifications. For the most part, as long as they don't completely destroy the fortification, the amount of damage they do is way less than the amount that the scout is able to pick up during that time. For this reason, just let them keep beating away, it gives you more time. Another thing to do is pick up those fences and turn the sentries around. If you don't want to kill the last enemy yet, be sure your fortifications aren't doing unnecessary damage. Turning your sentries around and picking up the fences are going to ensure that they don't kill the last enemy. The last tip I have for keeping enemies alive is doing an extended execution or the face punch. When the last enemy goes down, give it about 20 to 30 seconds and then do a long execution on them. This is going to give your scout an additional 15 seconds to run around the map. On the topic of the scout getting energy, let's talk about when to run multiple scouts. Most organized teams will only run a single scout, but because we want to get as much energy as possible before the wave ends, and we don't want to wait forever for the scout to run around, we've actually started running multiple scouts on some maps. The main maps we'll do this on are Foundation, Lift, Forge, and maybe Glory or Spire. What do these maps have in common? Well, depending on your setup, they have multiple main routes. Take Lift and Forge for example. Both of these maps are shaped with two very long lanes between the spawn locations. This leads us to having multiple areas with a lot of bunched up power. On Foundation, we have three sections. Here, we're normally going to send one person out through the middle to grab the largest grouping of energy, and the other scout's going to sweep both of the side sections. We tend not to have the scouts get each side first and then meet in the middle, because we want to ensure that we get that center section as a priority. That's where the most energy is going to be, so we want to make sure we get that. Being that the other classes have a much greater offensive capability, I wouldn't recommend running dual scouts for beginner groups. This is just one of those techniques that's nice once your team gets more comfortable with the offense and you're trying to push for a little more speed in your runs. The last topic I'm going to cover in this video has to do with enemy spawning. Let's take a look at bosses. Bosses will by far take the most power away from the remaining enemy bar. Because of this, if you get the bar low enough before killing a boss, you're probably not going to get another boss. This can be used to your advantage. You can either kill the boss right away and hope for a second one for additional energy, or you can wait a bit and then kill it so you only get one boss. It's really up to how comfortable your team is with that particular boss. Now let's take a look at their spawn locations. Most maps only have a few spawn locations for bosses and it's not that hard to force a boss to a specific one. Harbor is probably my favorite example. Here we are set up on a boss wave. As you can see everyone except the engineer is on a turret. We're going to use the engineer as our blocker. By moving the engineer over to the drop shot spawn area, we block this spawn location. Our team, in our base, is blocking another spawn location. The only remaining spawn location for bosses is all the way across the map. This makes the boss spawn on the complete opposite side of the map and gives us much more time to focus fire on it. It really sucks when a carrier or a snatcher spawns close, sort of like the drop shot spawn, and it just gets to our base too quickly and starts destroying stuff. Along these same lines, we can use this method for controlling enemy spawns when using the Hammer of Dawn. The Hammer of Dawn obviously doesn't hit enemies that are inside, so for this reason, if you're going to use a Hammer Strike, it can be beneficial to block a spawn. Not only can you block people from spawning inside, but you also force a tighter grouping of enemies, making for more efficient Hammer Strikes. So yeah, that's going to wrap up the tips for this video. These Horde videos are really fun to do, and there's a ton of content to cover. I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot more Horde videos. If there's anything specific you want to see, be sure to let us know. If you like this video, go ahead and drop it a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter to keep up to date with our content. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.